and next week a new play will have its international debut in one of London's leading theatres. The Nightmares of Carlos Fuentes is based on an award-winning book by the Iraqi filmmaker and writer Hassan Blasim, who in 1999 was forced to leave his country when his work was condemned for its attacks against the dictator Saddam Hussein. The book has been brought to the stage by the journalist and playwright Rashid Razak, and the main character Salim is played by the actor Nabil el who recently appeared on our screens in the American series 24. They're both joining me in the studio. A very good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. Are you excited, nervous about your debut next week? <laughs> a, bit of, a bit of both. A bit, of both. A bit, a bit of both. nervous <laughs> excitement, I think. No, definitely. But it, it, it is a big play because, OK, it's about a guy who leaves his country That's and right. comes to the United Kingdom, but it's not as straightforward as it appears. No, no, not at all. Um, no, I think, um, essentially, it's, it's, a, it's, it's about a guy who tries to reinvent himself, who comes to Britain and uh, takes on this new identity. And it's a, it's, a, it's a tragedy, so I don't want to give too much away, but um, it's about his failure to kind of reinvent himself and uh, negotiate what Britishness is. And I think um, that's something that kind of Nabil came to me yeah. with. He came to me with the short story. Yeah. And it's quite interesting how that all... Um, took part. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Um, in 2000, I think it was 2009. I came across the short story, and I was really moved um, by it. In particular, the, the idea of kind of assimilation and the inability to reconcile your past, leaving. You know, I'm, you know, a child of immigrants. You know, economic immigrants myself, and I found that really fascinating. So, and I'd worked with Rashid on a 10-minute piece about the Arab Spring as a separate. Endeavor. So, with the story, I thought, I wonder who'd be interested in writing this. So I took it to him, and uh, and yeah, he responded really well. And then I took it to an artistic director of the Tricycle Theatre at the time, Nicholas Kent, who was responsible for giving platforms for a lot of work like this. Uh, he'd just retired from the Tricycle, uh, and I took the story to him. And I expected him to say no, to be honest. Um, but he loved it, and we've been working on it for two years so, now. So it's taken two years? Two yeah. Years. So, that is, so that's the writing, obviously making changes, one assumes, but also making sure that you don't lose the integrity of the book. Well, I mean, I think the difficulty short, was... I think it's a, it's a brilliant short story, and it's very psychological, where really he works as a short story, but I think putting that on stage was trying to make it dramatic. Um, <laughs> I think we went through various kind of drafts, and actually... Strangely enough, actually, in a, in a sad way, that it, it's set in, in Iraq and it starts off in Iraq in 2006, and he's fleeing sectarian violence. And then we find ourselves here in 2014, and the whole thing has erupted again, and it couldn't be any more topical than it is, you know. And I think um, that whole issue just hasn't gone away. It's just we're, we're here in the West, we're taking notice of it again. But that's, that's, that's a strange thing as well. When you look at this play, it's, it's the fact that timing really is everything. Because, yes, we've got this new crisis unfolding in Iraq. Mm. And at the same time, we've had this question raised very recently here about Britishness. What is Britishness? Absolutely. Right? And so all of these themes. And also the question of assimilation. We're coming up for an election yeah. next year. But that old chestnut, immigration, it never really quietens down. It's always there, bubbling away the undercurrent. Well, I mean, this is the thing that I found fascinating. I mean, I, I thought, well, wow, we hit a zeitgeist in that respect. Um, but I think it's something that's, all, you know, it surfaces all the time. These are questions that we ask ourselves, you know, who we are, what, uh, in relation in um, relation to the place we're at. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, um, I think it's a really important piece of work. I always, I hate that word, important, but I, I do think it's an important piece of work. I think it changes, I hope, it will give a, a different lens to what's basically the kind of theatrical convention at the moment. I think it's something different. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you, you said that the theatrical convention, what, what is the theatrical convention when you're dealing with such big themes and where the central character is somebody from the Middle East? And we know about the perceptions which tend to surround people from that neck of the woods, the Western perceptions. Mm. Sure. No, I think I mean, the whole play is about identity as such. Uh, Celine comes to Britain and he wants to be the perfect British man, but I don't think any of us really know anymore what is the perfect British person, because that notion that we kind of harp back to is from the 1950s, you know, before all these waves of immigration, I think actually we don't even know what it is we're in ob uh, objection to. And I think that's what we're, the, the question that we're asking, is when you can reconstruct your identity, when you're trying to reinvent yourself, what is it that you're trying to become? You know, what is that perfect British citizen? I don't think any of us can really say that. And that's just a question we're trying to make audiences think about and hopefully see, uh, you know, an Arab character not as you normally see them on, on TV, as, you know, as terrorists or, you know, uh, uh, normally yeah, yeah. primarily terrorists, mm. you know. Yeah, cause, I mean, it's, it's interesting as well because I know that recently you, you gave an interview where you were talking yeah. about the problems that you've had as an actor be because of your North African heritage, that um, there is this sense of, well, you know, 
be a great to play the terrorist yeah. or whatever, or, or, the, or the bad guy. I mean, that must be professionally really frustrating. Well, I mean, I think uh, to, to kind of put it more into context, I think what happens is uh, it's, it's about a spectrum, about being able to play a spectrum of characters, and I think that's what's missing. I think, you know, of course terrorism happens and therefore people who look like people from that region will play those parts. Nobody's disputing that. I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. I think, but to see um, Arabs as uh, loving fathers, as grieving fathers, as... Or so, Shakespeare, for or, example. Or, or, exactly. Yeah. It, you know, and I think it's just... The, the, the narrative is so narrow, I think, at the moment, and I'd just like to challenge that a bit, you yeah, know? Yeah, but, but it must be incredibly frustrating, though, and, and, and also as a writer, that perhaps do you find that people think, well, OK, then, because of your ethnicity, these are the subjects which you're very good at writing about. You couldn't possibly write about um, a middle-class English couple who are having adulterous relationships or whatever, that you're kind of hemmed in in that way. I can, I can see how people could have that perception, but I think as a writer you've actually got a bit more freedom because you're in control of your own material. And I think the brilliant thing is actually this whole thing wouldn't have happened without Nabil reading that short story coming to me and saying, I, I can see some potential in this. And so, you know, rather than just complaining, he's decided to do something about it and hopefully that's all, that we're just as long as we're giving a platform, you know, to, to right. bring some new ideas. But it's a slightly controversial question that I'm going to throw at you. You could be cynical and say, look, the reason why this production has been embraced, why it's going to debut next week, is because of the backdrop in which it's being staged, what is happening now. Could you have actually got it staged by a man with an incredible reputation as a director, etc., 20 years ago, 15 years ago, before we are where we are now at this point in the world? Um, yes, is the answer to that, because uh, Nick was putting work like this on, um, uh, you know, challenging the status quo 20 years ago, exactly that. I mean, that's one of the things that I've admired about him immensely. He's always been somebody who's challenged the status quo. I always call him, you know, the kind of um, so the, uh, rebel, really, you know, he's a rebel. Um, and I think that's what... I believe theatre, art, cinema should be. Uh, there should be a, a section for that, you know, as well as entertainment. You know, I'm not saying that you know, everything needs to be kind of earnest and mm. intense. Uh, and I think this is a very funny play, just to make it. Clear. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a tragedy, but it's also very funny. Yes, yeah, so I was reading. I was reading a summary of it, and um, your character Salim, he actually hooks up with this this older wealthy woman yeah. who decides to teach him. Britishness yes. from a bed, but part of it is knowing the, the wives of Henry VIII, not that's biblically, right. of course, just the names. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> but again, that narrow definition of yeah. Britishness, it's knowing who the wives are of Henry VIII. <laughs> I went on to online to check out the citizenship questions, and I was astounded. I couldn't get any of them. <laughs> it was so <laughs> difficult. <laughs> but we, but we, we can't either, yeah. so we're not very yeah. British. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was, it's really revealing in that respect. And really, just creating the debate. Um, and, and putting some different characters on stage for me is great. When I was sending this play out to friends who I respect their opinions, one of the um, uh, common th um, feedback I'd get would be, oh, I have not seen anything like this on stage. And that's great. I like the idea of that. So hopefully from the stage to the television... Well, I think that might, you know, fingers crossed, we're just hoping we, you know, we have a good run and then see what yeah. comes from that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, yeah, if there's any... But, but bringing it back to this theme about timing, I mean, for example, we've had this huge debate going on in the British media here with the BBC. Uh, the comedian and actor Lenny Henry said, hang on a minute, you're not doing mm -hmm. enough to, pro to promote ethnic minority representation, representation, not just in front of the cameras, but behind as well. Absolutely. They said, OK, we're going to put aside 5% of the budget to do just that. So that's a great idea in principle, but is it likely to feed through? How hopeful are you that, uh, you know, if, if not your place, certainly something else dealing with equally controversial subjects, issues which affect us directly I, in I the community can make that transition? Mm. I, th I think it's a step in the right direction. It yeah. should be applauded. But ultimately, we want work that's good and stands on its own two Absolutely. feet. So we don't want tokenistic work that's just mm. taking boxes. Um, but but it, is that the worry, that, that it will end up being tokenistic? It's very well, safe think, and not, it's not likely to rock the, all, rattle the cage. I think all we can really ask for is the opportunity. And then mm. when the work's there, Absolutely. it can be judged. And if it's Absolutely. not good, then people should say it's not very good. You yeah, know? And I think that, that's it, essentially. And I think it's, it's a great thing that we're making strides and people are being more visible. And I think, you know, hopefully this is a story I don't think that I've seen before yep. on stage. And ultimately mm. it's something that I'd like to see. OK, so, so hopefully, give, given what's happening, we can see the transition of, of works like yours onto the mainstream. But also, putting it in your court, is it likely to encourage ethnic minority actors to say, well, hang on a minute, maybe now is not the time to look stateside because clearly people are listening, or certainly the state broadcaster is listening. So 
maybe we can stay here and build I mean, a career for ourselves because a lot of black actors are actually going abroad. Yeah. They're going to America. That's where the breaks are. Well, I mean, I think that there's a lot to be said for that. I think it should, becomes just a, a choice. Um, you know, I, I, I was moved enough by this particular story and I was lucky enough to have the right collaborators at the time and you know it's taken two years of my life but it's been an immense experience you know building something brick by brick as an actor I'd never I have a newfound respect for all the different sections in the kind of industry now um, as to what people would do I mean everybody that's their choices but I think there's something you know being able to give people platform create a debating space I think it, that's all mm. I can hope for and I'm really proud to be part of it okay well guys it sounds like an absolutely amazing play that's the nightmares of Carlos Fuentes debuts next week the premiere and which mm. theatre Arcola theatre in the Dalston theater. excellent Come okay so well, we'll look out for that. Thank and you. And I'll get your autographs afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much, much for Thank taking you. us through that.